Which brand makes the best puffer down jackets? I asked you guys on my Instagram, what is your favorite puffer jacket? And I tied up all your responses and I came up with the top four most popular puffer jackets according to you guys. That's right, instead of paying rent for the past two months, I spent $4,000 buying puffer jackets to make this video. I'm gonna be rating each jacket out of 10 based on its functionality, its fit, its warmth, and overall value. At the end of the video, I'm gonna tie up all the scores and give you guys what I think is the best puffer jacket on the market today. So keep watching. Merry Christmas, I got you a gift. Wow, what is it? Oh my god, this is so beautiful. I love this color. I can't believe it can hold this many cards too. Thank you so much, I love this. For this upcoming holiday season, treat your friends and family with a beautiful and minimalist extra card holder. Each one of their colorways are absolutely stunning. These are made from high quality 6061 T6 aluminum and the carbon fiber is 3K space grade so you know all their card holders are gonna last you for years to come. The quick card access with just one click of a button is a game changer and a slim profile makes it so easy to carry around. Each wallet features an expandable aluminum backplate. It holds up to 12 cards and cash and even blocks RFID to prevent wireless theft. So check out the website, they have so many awesome items and now is the perfect time because right now they're having their Christmas sale. Plus you can get up to 55% off if you use my code MFF at checkout. So check out the website, use my discount code and I promise you that you won't be disappointed. Starting off with the fourth most popular puffer jacket according to you guys and that is the Canada Goose Crofton. This jacket retails for $1,095, making this the second most expensive puffer jacket featured in this video. Is this insanely high price tag worth it? Let's find out. Starting off with the material, the shell is made from 100% ripstop nylon and the lining is made from 100% polyamide. This jacket is filled with 90% duck down and 10% feather. It has a fill power of 750 and a scale of 1 of 5 in the thermal experience index. This jacket is a 4 which means it can handle temperatures as low as negative 25 celsius or negative 13 degrees fahrenheit. The Canada Goose weighs in at only 922 grams, making this the second heaviest jacket featured in this video. Now let's talk about the features. The Canada Goose Crofton is both windproof and waterproof. How waterproof you may ask? Let's go find out. I'm outside my house, it's like 20 degrees, it's freezing, and I'm about to spray myself with a hose. Let's do this. For my body. For my body. I'm aiming for your body, right, I don't know where I'll go. <laughs> Now take a look at these results. My t-shirt is completely dry. The water didn't even leak through the zipper. Canada Goose Crofton Jacket passes the hose test. The Canada Goose Jacket has a total of three zip pockets. Two zip pockets at the belly that are both lined with the fleece to keep your hands nice and toasty. On the inside there are two big fishnet pouches and one huge vertical zip pocket. Flipping this pocket inside out, there's a Canada Goose branded webbing strap. Why is that there you may ask? Because the jacket has a very cool feature where you can stuff the entire higher jacket into this pocket and it becomes a stylish strap-on bag. Canada Goose has YKK Vizlon zippers that are great for harsh winter conditions as you saw earlier when I got sprayed with the hose and still remain dry. It has two-way zip plus a very long pull tab so you can easily zip even with thick gloves on. At the top of the sleeves you see the signature Canada Goose Expedition patch. For the Canada Goose jacket, it also has the knit cuffs surrounded by the lovely down insulation so your arm gets complete coverage. Canada Goose doesn't play around when it comes to extreme weather. That's why they make their hoods so freaking massive. The hood will cover well past your face and if that's not enough, they even add a 3 inch brim to shield your face even more. So torrential rain, blizzard, whatever you name it, this hood has got you covered. Literally. Time to give this jacket a rating. For the functionality, I'll give it a 9. So how does the Crofton jacket fit? Starting off with some measurements, shoulder to shoulder measures to 18 inches, chest measures to 24 inches, sleeve lengths are 26 and a half inches, and the length is 27 inches. First impression, you probably think Canada Goose fits large because I look like a muffin wearing this, but looks can be deceiving. It looks a lot larger than it actually is because it is overstuffed with down insulation. 
The 18 inch shoulder opening is the most narrow out of all jackets featured in this video. In contrast, surprisingly, the 24 inch chest opening is the largest out of all jackets featured in this video. The 27 inch body length is long enough to cover my entire butt. Can I goose with out a doubt values functionality over looks like come on just look at me i look like a giant fat blob but there is a trade-off to looking like a fat blob the overly puffy down insulation is so comfortable it feels like pillows are hugging all around my body i'm probably at the stage in my adulthood where it's time to value comfort over looks time to give this jacket a rating for the fit i'll give it a seven now let's talk about the warmth starting with the candid goose it's about 22 degrees with wind chill I've been wearing the Canada Goose cropped and down jacket for about four hours now and I can conclude that this jacket is incredibly warm. I mean look at this jacket, it's completely overstuffed with down insulation. Luckily I didn't get mugged because I'm just wearing a t-shirt underneath and I would freaking freeze to death. With the hood on that just brings this to another level of warmth. This jacket is rated to handle temperatures as low as negative 20 celsius so at negative 5 celsius or negative 22 degrees fahrenheit I am feeling incredibly warm. I can literally be outside all day wearing this jacket and not get frostbite and die. Time to give this jacket a rating. For the warmth, I'll give it a perfect score of 10. For the overall value, I'll give it a 9. That brings the total score for the Canada Goose Crofton 35 out of 40. We're off to a strong start. Let's see if the next one can top this. And now the third most popular puffer down jacket according to you guys, and that is... The Mackage Kent. Mackage was founded in Montreal in 1999. The Kent is their flagship puffer jacket. It retails for $990, making this the third most expensive puffer jacket featured in this video. Let's see what the hype is all about. Starting off with material, the shell is made from 100% nylon and the lining is made from 100% nylon. This jacket is filled with 85% recycled down and 15% waterfowl feathers. The fill power is 800. The jacket weighs in 1,033 grams, making this the heaviest jacket in this video. Now let's talk about the features of the Mackage Ken. This jacket is windproof and also made of a waterproof nylon shell. How waterproof is this jacket, you may ask? Let's do a little bit of testing. One, two. As you can see, my t-shirt is completely dry. It did a perfect job of keeping water from seeping through. I can confidently say that the Mackage Kent jacket passes the hose test. I can also confirm that the jacket shell is waterproof as the water droplets roll off the jacket easily. The Kent jacket features your signature oversized channel quilting and the high sheen nylon shell. It has a total of four zip pockets, two zip pockets of the belly that are both lined with fleece to keep your hands nice and toasty. On the inside, it's lined with 100% nylon. There's two interior zip pockets on both the right and left sides. For the zippers, Mackage produces their own metal zippers. There's a long leather pull tab so you can easily zip even with thick gloves on. Unfortunately, this jacket does not have two-way zip. This has knit cuffs surrounded by the lovely down insulation so your arm gets complete coverage. Moving up the sleeves, you have the extremely bold Mackage logo. Moving up to the hood, Mackage does not play around when it comes to the winner. The circumference of the hood is huge but the brim is not overly long. The hood drawstrings are lined with leather that feels soft and looks high quality. It also features a tall and puffy stand-up collar to keep your neck very warm. The hood is removable through these snap buttons. Time to give this jacket a rating. For the functionality, I'll give it a 9. So how does the Mackage Kent fit? Starting off with some measurements, shoulder to shoulder measures to 21 inches, chest measures to 23 inches, sleeve lengths to 26 inches, and the length is 28 inches. The Kent jacket fits loose and I recommend going down a size. The 21 inch shoulder opening is the widest out of all jackets featured in this video. The 28 inch length is also the longest so it covers the majority of your butt. Just like the Canada Goose Crofton, the Kent jacket is extremely puffy and makes you look like a fat blob. But the overstuffed insulation is so comfortable because it feels like pillows are hugging my entire body. Here's how the jacket looks with the hood on. The hood is very big, it doesn't have an overly long brim but it's just enough to shield your face from rain and snow. Now time to give this jacket a rating. For the fit, I'll give it a 7. Now let's talk about the warmth of the Mackage Kent. It's about 19 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 7 degrees Celsius. This jacket is filled with 85% pure goose down and 15% feather. The fill power is 800. After wearing this jacket for about 3 hours, I can confidently say that the Kent jacket is made to handle the winner. The overstuffed down insulation does a fantastic job at keeping my body warm. A couple of features that I really like about this jacket is the down insulation on the hood and neck collar is not skimmed. 
It provides the same level of warmth as the insulation at the body. The long 28 inch body length gives extra coverage and keeps my butt warm. The Storm Cuff does an excellent job of providing extra comfort and stopping wind from blowing up my sleeves. The fleece lining in the pockets make it extra cozy for my hands. My only issue is for the steep $1,000 price tag, I wish this jacket had a 90 to 10 down to feather ratio instead of an 85 to 15 down to feather ratio. Now time to give this jacket a rating. For the warmth, I'll give it a 9. For the overall value, I'll give it a 9. That brings the total score for the Mackage Kent 34 out of 40. Let's see if the next one's any better. And now the second most popular puffer down jacket according to you guys, and that is the Montclair Maya. This jacket was featured in Drake's hit song Hotline Bling where he wore a cherry red Maya. The internet went nuts, memes were created, sales for his jacket tripled in a day, and his jacket has forever cemented itself as an internet sensation. With all that hype, let's take a closer look at this jacket. Starting off with the material, the shell is made from 100% nylon and the lining is also made from 100% nylon. Montclair is known for using very dense nylon that is extremely lightweight, weighing in at only 33 grams per square meter. It's also woven in a fine way so you don't see feathers poking through the shell. This jacket is filled with 90% pure goose down and 10% feather. The fill power is 710. The jacket weighs in at 845 grams, making this the second lightest jacket featured in this video. Let's talk about the features of the Montclair Maya. The signature high shine finish is thanks to a process called calendaring, where the fabric is pressed between two scalding hot rollers. In the Maya's case, this is done twice, helping the 40 denier nylon repel both snow and rain. And and also keeping the jacket lightweight. Let's go outside and find out how water repellent this jacket really is. One, two, three. This one's pretty bad. Here are the results. Water did seep through the jacket a bit, especially in the lower waist area and around the belly, but the majority of my body is dry. Considering how much water was shot at me, the Maya jacket did a great job. Right off the box, the construction of this jacket is very well done. All the seams are straight, no loose threads, and no down feathers are poking through. The Montclair jacket has a total of three zip pockets, two zip pockets of the belly that are not lined with any fleece. On the left arm is a small button pouch with their signature Montclair patch sewn on. On the inside it is lined with 100% nylon. There's only one interior pocket total on the left side. All their pockets are disappointingly small. And at the bottom is a cool comic strip that explains the washing and care instructions. The snap buttons and zippers are made of Zamac, which is a zinc alloy. This metal is extremely popular but very cheap to make. I I always spec higher quality metal like brass considering the $1,750 price tag. The jacket does have two-way zip. The sleeve openings are adjustable through a snap button. I'm extremely disappointed that there are no knit cuffs. Every high-end down jacket I've owned has it but not Montclair. Moving up, there's a stand-up collar to keep your neck warm. The hood is very standard. The brim is not overly long and you can remove the hood through these snap buttons. Time to give this jacket a rating. For the functionality, I'll give it an 8. So how does a Maya jacket fit? Starting off with some measurements, shoulder to shoulder measures to 18 and a half inches, chest measures to 22 inches, sleeve lengths are 26 inches, and the length is 24 and a half inches. Here's how the Montclair Maya jacket fits. For a puffer jacket, this fits extremely slim. You definitely have to go up a size in this. The 22 inch chest opening is the most narrow out of all four jackets, and also the 24 and a half inch length is the shortest. The designer hated how standard puffer jackets made you look like a fat muffin. So you use a bolted construction which is a horizontally stitched quilting that's filled with a precise ratio per inch of goose down. Bodin means sausage in French and is basically the puffy strips in between the horizontal stitching. The more bodin a jacket has, the more the designer can work on its fit. The Maya has 5.5 bodin where previous designs have only 4.5. The Maya jacket is by far the slimmest puffer jacket on the market. It looks tailored so you don't have to sacrifice style in the winter. Here's how the jacket looks with the hood on. Maintaining its slim silhouette, there's no brim and the hood is not overly big. You still look stylish while keeping your head warm and dry. Time to give this jacket a rating. For the fit, I'll give it a 9. 
Now let's talk about the warmth of the Montclair Maya jacket. I'm extremely impressed by the warmth considering how light and slim this jacket is. It's about 19 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 7 degrees Celsius. The jacket is still 9% pure goose down and 10% feather. The fill power is 710. 9 to 10 down to feather ratio is as close to high quality as you can get. The placement of the down is also very well done. For example, certain spots of my body doesn't feel colder than the other. My body feels equally warm all around. But there's a couple of features about this jacket that does not make it a good jacket for extreme winter conditions. First, the short torso of the jacket does an awful job at preventing wind from traveling up my hips. Second, the lack of storm cuffs doesn't prevent wind from blowing up the sleeves. And third, there is no fleece lining in the pockets to keep my hands extra warm. Overall, the Maya jacket is decent for the winter, but there are obvious sacrifices made to the warmth in order to keep this jacket slim and fashionable. Time to give this jacket a rating. For the warmth, I'll give it an 8. For the overall value, I'll give it a 7. That brings the total score for the Montclair Maya jacket, 32 out of 40, making this the lowest rated jacket so far. Let's see if the next one can top this. And then number one most popular puffer down jacket according to you guys, and that is, drum roll please, the North Face 1996 Retro Nupsy. For the past five years, this jacket has ranked as the second most popular fashion item trailing only behind the Nike Air Force Ones. And with 90s fashion trends coming back to life, this jacket has no problem selling out every single year. But is all that hype well justified? Let's find out. Starting off with material, the shell is made from 100% ripstop nylon and the lining is made from 100% nylon. This jacket is filled with 85% down and 15% feather. The fill power is 700. The jacket weighs in at 727 grams, making this the lightest jacket out of all four, but that has a lot to do with this lack of features than anything else. Let's talk about the features of the North Face Nupsy. This jacket is rated to be windproof and water repellent with a DWR coating. Waterproof and water repellent is not the same. The difference is that water repellent means it can handle only so much water, where waterproof acts as a complete barrier. How water repellent is this jacket, you may ask? Let's push it to the limits and find out. As you can see, water did seep through the jacket, mainly in the front belly. This jacket did not do a good job at keeping water out, and I would not wear this jacket out in heavy rain or snow. The North Face jacket has a total of three zip pockets, two zip pockets at the belly that are not lined with any fleece. On the inside, it is lined with 100% nylon. There's only one interior pocket total on the left side. All their pockets are disappointingly small. North Face uses YKK Vizlon zippers. These are just the standard Vizlon zippers that are much cheaper than the Vizlon zippers used in luxury brands like and a goose. Disappointingly, there is no two-way zip. The sleeve openings are adjustable through Velcro. I'm very upset that there are no nick cuffs. Moving up, there's a stand-up collar to keep your neck warm. The hood is packed in this neck pouch. Taking it out, this hood is literally paper thin with no insulation. This hood will keep your head dry in light rainfall, but don't expect any type of warmth from this. Now time to give this jacket a rating. For the functionality, I'll give it a 7. So how does a Nupsy jacket fit? Starting off with some measurements, shoulder to shoulder measures to 21 inches, chest measures to 23 inches, sleeve lengths are 25 inches, and the length is 25 inches. This is how the North Face Nupsy looks on me. First impression, the jacket fits very boxy, which is a staple in 90s fashion. The 25 inch length hits right at the waist. This short length is meant for mountain climbers to have easy access to their harnesses. But we all know 99% of the people that own this jacket don't climb mountains during the winter. Just like most puffer jackets, the North Face does make you look like a muffin. The bright side to that is the insulation feels like pillows are hugging all around my body. Even though this jacket looks like it fits large, I recommend going true to size. Here's how the jacket looks with a hood on. The hood is a huge contrast to the overall puffy fit in the jacket. There's zero insulation and it's paper thin. This hood looks so off and it feels like it doesn't belong on this jacket. If North Face is going to provide this type of low quality hood, then might as well leave it off entirely. Now time to give this jacket a rating. For the fit, I'll give it an 8. Now let's talk about the warmth of the North Face Nupsy. It's about 19 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 7 degrees Celsius. This jacket is made with 85% down and 15% feather. It has a fill power of 700. And this jacket is freaking cold. Freaking cold. Considering this jacket weighs in at 727 grams, the warmth to weight ratio is very disappointing. This jacket is great for mild winter conditions, but when it's below freezing like right now, then I would not wear this out. There's four features about this jacket that I really hate. 
first is the lack of a hood. It doesn't have to be rainy to wear a hood. When it's below freezing outside like right now, you want to be able to put on a hood to keep your head and ears warm. The North Face hood does not provide any insulation at all, so I think North Face is better off just leaving it off. Second is the lack of the storm cuffs. Storm cuffs do an excellent job preventing wind from blowing up your sleeves and giving you extra comfort. This jacket does not do any of that. Third is the lack of fleece lining in the pockets. Fleece lining helps trap heat and keep a cozy environment for your hands. And lastly, the short torso of the jacket does an awful job at preventing wind from traveling up your hips. Overall, this jacket is way more suited for the fall rather than the winter time. A time to give this jacket a rating. For the warmth, I'll give it a 7. For the overall value, I'll give it a 9. That brings a total score for the North Face Nupsy jacket 31 out of 40. And now the moment that you've all been waiting for. The winner of the best puffer down jacket is... Canada Goose Crofton with a final score of 35 out of 40. The Crofton jacket is an extremely well made jacket that will keep you warm. It doesn't look the best fashion wise, but when it's below freezing outside, who cares? And here are the final ratings of all four puffer jackets with Canada Goose at the top and North Face at the bottom. If you're looking for more useful down jacket videos like this one, then click right here from my playlist dedicated entirely to down jackets. And that's it for this week's video. Let me know in the comments if you agree with my scores or not. If this video helped you guys out, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.